Listen to the presentation of Geshtepa concerning multi-faced Linux I uh, work at Wim Software. Our office is in St. Petersburg, uh, is in Prague. He corrects himself that is particularly uh, convenient for relocation. Linux is not only one of the most popular OSs. This is a platform that makes it possible to make something unique uh, for yourself. Due to that, Linux uh, has a lot of distros uh, that have uh, different uh, software components, and there is a problem. Uh, for the software uh, to function equally well on HSTV, if you have to take into account the specific features of which, uh, as uh, we are going to consider mastery of different uh, distributors uh, using the uh, product Limitix uh, for Linux on C++. That is important because uh, most of the problems are related with native code. Besides the problem, the product contains uh, the kernel module that uh, creates uh, special spectral problem. Let us start with the obvious problem. The most typical means of uh, distribution of the program is uh, that uh, distributive. It will be on the repository so that the embedded packet, uh, package manager would be able to install the program, uh, program product, or uh, to upgrade it. However, as to the popular formats, we have to apply ARM and DEP. At least the difficulties that will have to support each of them. In the world of DEP packages, the compatibility level uh, is such that the same program software package is installed well on DDM says on Ubuntu 19.04. Standards of the process of building packages and working with them are included into the old distributed Debian 6. And they are uh, quite typical for elementary ROIs and other fashionable distributors at the moment. As to the Red Hat, Hat it is more difficult, and uh, RPM it is also more difficult. The distributor that distributes uh, the packages uh, RPM minus two that is Red Hat associate and uh, their compatibility is not uh, necessary. Moreover, both. Uh, and distributors have uh, this, uh, distributives that are experimental with technical support and without them compatibility is not needed as well. With them compatibility is not needed and this uh, raises significant problems. And the main problem is the dependencies and names of the packages. Hello, similar packages often appear to have different names in different distros. That is a non-complete list of uh, dependencies or package for RC and SS12. The list uh, sometimes uh, might be the unique for each distributor. It is uh, even worse when under the old package uh, the renewed version is concealed. For instance, Fedora 24. Uh, and courses package was uh, renewed, uh, upgraded from version 5 to version 6. Our product was based on the fifth version to ensure compatibility with all the distros. So to maintain Fedora 24, we had to publish a separate package. Then it is even more interesting. From the next upgrading of Fedora, the old package, which contained the library of the fifth version, ceased to exist. Then, uh, the same procedure was used from the distro, and as a result we had to reject the direct dependence on the library and courses, and we had to learn software to operate uh, well with both uh, options of the library.
And the problem of dependence is old and obvious. You can recall dependence hell. Uh, if one to combine the diverse libraries and software in such a way that jointly they would uh, operate. This task is uh, tried to solve by each uh, Linux distributor. A different uh, solution is offered by packet manager Snappy Economical. The main idea of the application uh, is isolated and protected from the main system uh, sandbox. If the application needs certain libraries, it will pick it with itself. Flagback also makes it possible to uh, start applications in the sandbox uh, using Linux containers. The idea of the sandbox also uses a, a tenreach. The same solutions make it possible to have a single package for each, uh, for all distributors in case of uh, flatback and launching and uh, the uh, launching of the application might be uh, used even without the rights of a user, without uh, the knowledge of the administrator. No, uh However, in our case, the option of a sandbox is not suitable because our application needs a direct address to the platform so that our product, unfortunately, is not uh, presented in these resources. I to conclude uh, the issue of package managers, I would like to note that there is an option of rejecting package managers uh, entirely and to combine into the uh, single package both binary files and script for installing these uh, binary files on the system. This bundle makes it possible to uh, create uh, one uh, common uh, package for different distributors and platforms to have an interactive installation process uh, having the necessary consumization. I came across such packages uh, for uh, Linux for and VAR and I didn't uh, see any other packages. Even if all the problems of dependence have been solved, the uh, program might operate in different way on the same distributive uh, updates are necessary. There are three main strategies of updating. The simplest one, do not update ever. You just tune the server, you forget. Uh, why should you update if everything is operational? Uh, the distributor supports only the updated ver version of his distributive. Another option, you can uh, have an automatic update as soon as possible. In this case, the support service will have to update immediately after the poor updating. And the third option, manual update after testing of the update on the test infrastructure. This is time consuming. So we have to maintain all the three options. Microphone, извините, microphone не прерывается звук. So that adds a pain in the neck to the support technical support. I will dwell on the diversity of the hardware platforms. Mainly this is a problem primarily that is specific for the native code because you have to compile binary files for each platform. Uh, for Linux, we cannot uh, just support anything risky. There are a lot of other tasks to be solved. We just outlined the challenges that we face. These are the main ones. Platform dependent types such as SSD, alignment of structures, and byte order. And how we should link with the libraries dynamically or statically, I would like to focus on it. As a rule, CC++ application on Linux uses the dynamic linking. This works if it is especially intended for a specific distributive. If there is a task to cover diverse distributors with one binary file, you have to use the 
very old distro that is Red Hat 6. It contains GCC version 4.4 and even C++ is not supporting it entirely. We uh, combine our project using GCC 6.3 that supports completely C++ 14. Thus, the library with uh, C++, we have to bring it to Red Hat 6 with ourselves. Uh, thus, we have to link st uh, statically. But not all the libraries can be linked statically. For system libraries such as Leap, Belka 1, Leapfuse, have to be linked dynamically to be sure that they are compatible with the kernel and modules installed on the system. System. Secondly, uh, there are some problems with licensing. The license for GPL doesn't make it possible. It makes it possible to link only with open, co open source code and mid and based licenses, allow static linking and make it possible to add libraries to the project. LGPL libraries, there is some problem. Uh, obviously, they do not contradict the static linking, but they uh, oblige you to put uh, open access the files which ensure linking. Thus, in order uh, to be on the safe side, not to put anything, it's better to use uh, dynamic linking with Japan libraries. As a result, in the project we might have a mixture of static and dynamic libraries. Dynamic libraries can use other libraries and possibly there might be a situation of intersection of the libraries. Once I came across such a situation, adding Vix library to the project Vimbacut an application for the fail restorer for Linux, the library, Vix library, uses uh, kernel open necessarily and the VIX is linked dynamically, and in this library, SSL is also uh, downloaded dynamically, uh, but it is presented together with the library. The library is regarded as outdated. As a result, in our product, we also have an uh, open source. Thus, in the X5, there are two similar sets of functions. When these versions of the library start to differ, the most interesting things happen. Thus, uh, this is a part of the backtrace of the polling agent, you can see that the function SSL free from the library SSL uh, called the function M5009 free from, not from uh, native library, for stake library of the agent. Thus, there was attempt to resue, uh, release resources that were not uh, available. All uh, the systems are regarded as public, but from the main narrow file, it appears that it is available for the dynamically connected libraries, and there is no error formed in that case. And what is the function that will be used? Well, only dynamic link knows. Symbols visibility, it can be controlled and the keys make it possible to hide it, to hide the symbols from the static libraries and binary files. The visibility hidden flag shows to the compiler that by default all the symbols are not exported and exploit lib shows automatically. Not to export symbols from static libraries. Now, let us consider the option of the process of creating a package from the initial code, from the source code. C++ applications for different platforms and distributive, you can just uh, uh, can, uh, compile the suitable version of the and use a cross-compiler for specific architectures. You have to compile a necessary set of libraries. This work is realizable but tiresome. There are no guarantees that these compilers and libraries would ensure operability of the version. Uh, advantage is that the uh, structure is simplified and uh, the assembly might be on one uh, machine. You have to collect just one set of binary 
telephones and they can be packed in different packages for different distros. Let us uh, package uh, Win is assembled for Vim agent for Linux. Uh, unlike uh, this option, you can just prepare a build for uh, several machines for assembly. Each machine will issue assembly of the application and forming the package for the specific distros and specific architecture. In this case, compilation is carried out by the same means that are offered by the distributors. So the preparation stage of the compiler and selecting of the library is discarded. The process of assembly might be paralleled, there is a disadvantage of that uh, approach. For it, uh, for each distributive, we'll have to collect, and for each architecture, we'll have to collect to assemble their own set of binary files that increases time expenses. And also have uh, to uh, give a lot of disk space and uh, operational memory for placing the build on so thus uh, we uh, compiled Kimmel Potters for driving stuff uh, drivers uh, uh, based on Red Hat distributed. Luckily they are not so numerous. Our colleagues from SUSE tried to implement a certain golden middle as a special services for compiling and assembly of the packages open build service. Essentially, that is Hypervisa that creates a virtual machine, installs all the necessary the applications for compiling the packages, it makes compilation, assembly of the package in the isolated medium. After that, that virtual system is released. In open build service, the planner determines uh, how many virtual machines it can start for optimum uh, rate of uh, assembly. Embedded mechanism of signature can sign the packages in the build system of virtual control, keeps the history of changes. We can just the initial uh, characteristic. Even the server sometimes not might be used. You can use the open one. Of course, there might be a problem. Such a combine is not easily inscribed into the available infrastructure of assembly. For instance, version control, we don't need it. We have our own mechanisms of signatures that differ. We use a special server repository that is offered by open build server is also not used by us. And besides the support of other distros, for instance, Red Hat is realized quite scarily that doesn't make it possible to use this infrastructure for other distros. The advantage of this service is quick support of the next option of SUSE distro uh, to the official announcement of release. Uh, the uh, packages to be assembled are uh, put to the public repository and in the list of the distro, new distro appears, we put uh, a mark and it is added to the plan of assembly. Thus, addition of the new version of the distro is done by one click. In our infrastructure, we use open build service for the entire diversity of camp packages for WimpSnap for SUSE. And further, I wanted to uh, dwell on the issues that are specific for the kernel module. The kernel Linux kernel model historically were distributed as initial text. The creators of the kernel do not uh, uh, are not concerned with maintainers of a stable IP, uh, IP for the kernel modules, particularly at the binary level. In order to uh, assemble a model for the vanilla kernel, you need the uh, header of the vanilla uh, Code in the KMS uh, automates uh, the process of assembly uh, when uh, upgrading the kernel. As a result, the users of uh, the repository Debian and its relatives, multiple LD, use uh, kernel modules either from the repository of the distro or assembled from the uh, source uh, units uh, using the KMS. However, enterprise segment of the market is not uh, quite like it with that option. Uh, 
proprietary code. The seminators would like to have it binary. Administrators don't want to keep it at production servers due to the security reasons. Uh, distributors of enterprise Linux uh, Red Hats and SUSEs decided that for their users they can provide stable KB. Uh, uh, so uh, there are package for SUSE as well and API stability is guaranteed that way. Source code is portable within a single release and compatible API can be guaranteed and modules are portable within a single release. Let's say they are using uh, 3.10 kernel and only improve it not uh, manipulating with the interface, uh, 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 but between releases, API and API can break, uh, but there should be compatibility, interoperability for the distributors throughout the life cycle. So uh, 6.0 for Red Hat, release of November 2010, by the way, should also work on 6.10 version of June 2018 version, and it's there almost eight years apart. It's a very challenging task. We recorded several cases when, due to the interoperability problem, uh, it was malfunctioning. Uh, uh, as for Red Hat 7.0, uh, when it was collected, it was not compatible with Red Hat 7.5 kernel, but it was uploaded and crashed the server. So we uh, discarded using uh, KBM. I have Red Hat 7 at all. Now, as to Red Hat 7, package it contains the assembly for each uh, version of the release and the script uh, to upload the model. As to SUSIS, as to ABI, uh, KBI interoperability, it's only within one service pack. For example, the release of service pack Swiss 12 was in September 2014, and the first service pack for it uh, came up in December 2015. 15. Uh, they are a year apart. Both releases are using kernel 3.12. Uh, uh, they are not interoperable with KBI. It's obvious that to support KBI interoperability throughout the year only is way easier. Uh, yearly life cycle of upgrading the module could not be, should not be a big problem. Uh, thanks to these policies of SUSE, we didn't have any problems with KBI interoperability with our module. Uh, despite the fact that distributors uh, are striving to make those KPIs interoperable and stable, they try to debug uh, the facts of these uh, stable kernel, apart from their own debugging uh, work. Uh, the developers of the kernel are tracking vanilla changes and shift them to their stable ones. Sometimes it brings about rather bizarre bugs in the uh, recent release of Red Hat uh, uh, 6, in one of minor upgrades, a bug was, uh, uh, so uh, when Snapshot was released, the system was crashed. We compared the sources, uh, uh, codes of both uh, uh, of the kernel. It was due to the backport. This, it was vanilla in kernel version 4.19, but in vanilla curve, uh, this fix worked in a good way, but it, when it was transferred into stable, it says, uh, things too. There was the problem. Uh, of course, bugs could be there, but uh, why should we take uh, this uh, source code uh, uh, taking stability, putting stability at risk? It was not worth it. Uh, and sometimes when we try um, uh, to have a trade-off between stability and uh, uh, safety, uh, marketing actually wants this kernel of this distributor to be stable and uh, have more efficiently and have got more functionalities, which brings about rather strange trade-offs at kernel 4. 4 is uh, 12 SP3. I was amazed, the, uh, amazed to find the functionality from vanilla 4.8 uh, as to uh, no uh, kernel 4.4. 4. Actually, it's uh, better for the uh, kernel 4.8.4 uh, than for the previous implementation of SSP2. In the slide, I 
uh, compare the structure by a no, a kernel 4, 4 with SSP3 and vanilla 1. Uh, very few changes. In this slide, we compare uh, kernel 4, 4 with there's 12 SP2 and uh, 4, 4 and SP3, and there are a big difference in the by, stru by structure. What was the percentage of transferred code from 4, 8, from less uh, 4, 4? I would not judge that, but to call this kernel as uh, stable as 4, 4, I wouldn't do that. And the most uh, unpleasant thing about it is that uh, we cannot rely on the version of the kernel anymore. We have to take into account which distributive it has been operating. Sometimes, of course, it could be some defined which shows up with no functionality, but it's not always that way. Uh, so as the result, the code uh, is piled up with very bizarre compil compiled uh, direct uh, pragmas uh, and uh, patches which uh, change documented APIs uh, at KDN on 4.16. Actually, I was amazed when I saw in a uh, PDF function and backup, backup with the extra parameter. Uh, so in order to assemble it, we had to end up in make file the script parameter to see whether this new function is there in this, that BD. As to the kernel module signature, uh, stable KPI is that as binary file, uh, it could be signed. That way, the developer could be sure that this module was not damaged deliberately or uh, inadvertently. Uh, the impact command could change its distributive red hat, uh, which we enables us to upload, let's say, only described modules. For that, into the system we have to add a certificate. The certificate is a uh, PKI, it's public key which uh, signs the module and we disseminate it for a separate path. Problem is that certificates uh, could be either Im embedded into a kernel and uh, they're used by distributors or it should be inscribed into energy uh, free uh, uh, memory using uh, utility uh, and utility requires to reload the system, uh, to reboot the system and before uploading of the kernel they uh, allow, they ask administrator to allow the uploading of the certificate. So uh, adding up certificate requires physical access of administrator in the system if machine is located in the cloud or in the remote server room. So there is only the access inside the energy network. It will not be possible to add up the certificate there. Notwithstanding the fact that actually uh, it's supported by all the uh, board uh, creators in a setting up the system, administrator might not think about the necessity of effort and it could be disconnected. Not all the advisors are using that VNR, SVR, uh, beginning from version uh, 5, they support uh, VFI uh, and microphones, uh, Microsoft uh, supports one of those uh, functions. But, but default, those configurations for Linux machine are dis disconnected, so it's not possible to install the uh, certificate in L6. It's not possible uh, to reboot this, and uh, in the old, it's possible only to do it in the old ver version. Uh, as to M05 uh, web UI, uh, they are lagging behind. So it's bias uh, which is recommended here. And uh, just let's consider the issue of experimental distributions uh, without official support. On the one hand, such distributions will not be uh, accounted and encountered at the official service. Uh, they don't have official support. Uh, so uh, to support them uh, by products is not possible. Uh, but they uh, become the venue for uh, testing new experimental decisions like Fedora, uh, Swissy, Tableweed, uh, uh, or unstable, given Debian, they are quite stable. 
And there are always new kernels in it. Uh, a year after this experimental functionality may be in Swiss or good or uh, Red Hat, which is uh, upgraded. If something doesn't work at the experimental distribution, you should resolve the problem somehow. Uh, because uh, this functionality will appear in the production service of the users. Uh, the list of officials is supported by all product distributions. You can see this slide. Uh, but as to the real list is way broader than what's shown here. For me, it was very interesting to experiment with OS Albros after we upgraded the product. Uh, uh, it was really working with really operable. I was writing on the hyper uh, the uh, part of the article about it. Uh, uh, if you're interested, you can see my contact information on the website. You'll find this information. In conclusion, I'm here to thank my colleagues who were giving me a helping hand in preparing the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attention. Hope uh, there are questions, and I'll take them. I don't see a thousand raised hands. You mentioned the problem of libcurl, libssr. Lib How did you resolve it? thing is that oh, when we change uh, lib, I couldn't change library. Lix is obsolete and um, uh, adding up those uh, flags. Uh, the external libs would not be f uh, will not find uh, the functions of static uh, libs and then the problem vanished when we added up those flags the problem vanished so so vix code used the old version of ssl and curl used the new one it initialized it uh, initialized objects uh, using this function from its own lib uh, from one version of his sl library uh, but uh, he was calling destructor uh, from our static lib uh, that was the problem it was uh, working in a detached way, uh, uh, so the system crashed because of that. I've got it. You do not upgrade SSL. We did upgrade SSL as to VixLib, as that library was part of obsolete and outdated ones. It contained older, more obsolete version of SSL. Of course, we tried to upgrade SSL lib, at least for each release, each release, and we release regularly. Uh, so you may rest assured it's uh, fresh SSL here. Any more questions? Let me add something else. Recently, I moved to Prague, and I decided to change my habits. Uh, so I jog uh, to my office, not drive, not ride. Uh, and uh, you can see my activities in Strive. Uh, there are several beautiful landscapes there. <laughs> well, just uh, uh, it's fun. Go to Prague, it's beautiful. If there are no more questions, it's, everything is clear. I'm glad that I conveyed my ideas uh, in my presentation. Thank you.